I will show you the top five features in the latest update of Power BI, July 2019. Our number one feature is something that brings Excel and Power BI closer together. So stick around for that and then you can decide if that's a good thing or not. If you want to catch up on all the recent Power BI updates, then at the end of this video, just click in the corner and access our complete update playlist. And if you're just getting started or keep getting stuck in Power BI, make sure to check out our complete step-by-step -step Power BI tutorial. I'm Avi Singh, Microsoft MVP and best-selling Power BI author. And if you want to become a Power BI pro, make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you are notified whenever I go live to answer your Power BI questions. Let's start at number five. Power Apps Visual is now certified. Woohoo! So any fans of Power App out there can rejoice. So Power BI it, it can provide interactive or even write back capability to your Power BI reports. And now with this visual certified, not only can you use it with a lot more confidence, but more importantly, now this is gonna work in the scenarios where this might have left kind of a hole in your report. So if you're exporting it to PowerPoint or you have set up this report to be included in a subscription, now that visual is going to be rendered in your report. Number four is percent support for conditional formatting. Now, conditional formatting is one thing that has steadily improved with Power BI, and we're all glad for that. So let's switch over to our report and take a look at that. So let me show you how the conditional formatting has been set up. So if you examine the conditional formatting, I've done the background color and I've used this newly available value. So I can say that, hey, anything that's over 50% color this, this light, I'm gonna call it light shade of green. Now, the key thing to remember is that how is the percentage calculated? I would admit it threw me off a little bit. First, I was confusing it with percentile, it is not. What it is, it is it is built based on the data range, the range of the data, the lowest value to the highest value. So in this case, the lowest value is $2 and the highest value is uh, 5.7 million. So 50% of this is right in the middle of this range. So 2.5, 2.8, uh, 52 million. And you can see values greater than that are green. And similarly, you can see over here the same conditional formatting, but now the data range is different. So it calculates the 50% based on the lowest value and the highest value and the same thing over here. If you want to examine this file a little bit closer to see how it all works, then you can get it at learnpowerbi.com slash download and the link is also included in the description below. Number three is an exciting new addition to our query editor. Now query editor, remember, is the kitchen off your Power BI. That's where you clean shape transform. If you want to learn more about that, you can click in the corner and access my Power BI tutorial. So let's see this one in action. So for this, I'm going to go to my query editor. I'm going to launch it from by clicking edit queries. And I have already loaded a sample file, which we're going to use for this. So let's switch over to this file. So uh, in here, it's kind of hard to see because, uh, well, let me just show you how this data looks like in Notepad. So Notepad, this is a monospaced font. So you can see, oops, uh, that these numbers are all kind of lined up at a specific character position. So we're gonna try to, uh, you know, split this column by that position. So I'm gonna go back in the My Query Editor and here I'm gonna say right click and split column by positions. Now this is where I was blown away, my friends. So, um, you know, it's hard to kind of get excited in, in a, a recording when you're doing it for the second time, but the first time I saw this, I'm like, what the what? So what I was expecting was that I'm gonna to have to go back to Notepad and uh, uh, let's see what's happening here uh, and, and maybe uh, turn on the status bar and then, you know, do some something like this and say, oh, okay, this is column 11 and or move my cursor and try to figure out that how many characters is it actually. But lo and behold, Power BI 
automatically guessed it it is insane so i want you to try it out with your data set which has this and see in how many cases power bi gets it right it may not get it right in all the cases but in my case it absolutely correctly identified exactly where the position of these different column is so 0 10 15 i'm going to hit ok and there i have it the column has been split based on the specific position remember that if you do something like this you might also want to trim the column again using the kitchen of power bi so just go to uh, the text section and format and and trim to remove any empty spaces number two is performance improvements when using relative date and drop down slicers now uh, i'm I'm pretty liberally use slicers whenever I need to. Now I know we have the glorious and amazing filter pane, which is pretty awesome, but still uh, you might run into scenarios or you might end up creating reports which look like this, which have a rich set of uh, uh, slicers or maybe even relative date filters, the one you see at the top, and you know, you whole bunch of these drop down slicers. Now, what was happening earlier was that uh, just like regular slicers, Power BI was running queries against this to see which one of these values were valid and should be available. Now, what Power BI has done is that it's not going to run those queries at the start. So report load times should be much faster if you create reports like this. Now, of course, the trade-off is that the first time the user clicks on this, it may take a little bit to load because that's when the queries are run. But overall, a certainly a positive move, and you can see how Power BI team kind of keeps looking at these corners and angles to how to improve this product for us. So kudos to the Power BI team. Are you excited about our number one feature? Are you excited about this, this idea, this thought of bringing in, blending together Excel and Power BI? Well, we're going to get to that, but before that, just one more reminder that, hey, if you're getting started or you keep getting stuck in Power BI, make sure to check out my Power BI tutorial, and the link is in the corner. So the number one feature, my friends, for, for this update, which brings together Excel and Power BI, is icon sets are now available in Power BI for tables and matrix. Now, this is, of course, something that has been there in Excel for a long time, and there were some hacks which uh, I had done in the past, and I've done videos uh, in the past about KPI sets where we have used icon sets, and I'm going to link to that just, just you know, you can uh, just go down the memory lane, but now you don't have to follow any of these hacks because these are now built into Power BI. Let's take a look. So here we have a simple table and what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand my visualization pane and we're going to go to variance in this case. Let's zoom in so we can take a better look. All right, so I'm zoomed in and here you can see that in conditional formatting there's also an option for icons and 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 there it is. So of course the rules, the specific rules, you can specify using anything you want, percentage, number, or change it up as you want. So you always have all the flexibility that conditional formatting provides. The only thing new is this now, this ability to choose from these icon sets. So you can see there are a lot of rich options. They're pretty similar to uh, Excel, but it goes beyond that as well. There's also flexibility to define your own icon sets if you like. But we're going to leave it nice and simple over here and just hit OK and there we have it, icon sets in Power BI. Now, if you want to catch up on all the recent Power BI updates, just click in the corner and access our complete update playlist now. Until next time, power on, my friend. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.